This sea salt could cost you more than 30 times the price of table salt. Unlike the cheap salt that's mined across the world, this salt is all harvested by hand in one remote region in the northwest of Iceland. So just what makes it so expensive? This is Saltverk. It's a sea salt factory in the west fjords of Iceland. Housed in one of the most remote and coldest locations in the country, it produces 10 metric tons of salt each year. The salt takes at least a week to make and almost all of the work is done by hand. But there's one other thing that's unique about the way that it's processed. Everything is powered entirely by geothermal energy. We use the geothermal energy that we have available here in Reykjanes Peninsula, which are one of the purest seawaters in the world. We are moving the water from the fjord into the big building here that we have outside. In each pool we have radiators. Through the radiators the hot water from the spring circulates and heats up the seawater. And as the water from the seawater evaporates, the concentration of salt gets higher. The tanks are run on hot water, the pans are run on hot water, the drying room is on hot water, the heating for the factory, for the houses, everything is run on hot water. It is green as it gets. The process of making sea salt is simple, but it takes a lot of work. Salt is made by heating seawater to evaporate the water and increase the salt level. Sea salt has been produced like this for thousands of years. Water pumped directly from the sea is naturally about 3.5% salt, but it needs to reach about 26% before the water is saturated and salt begins to form. The water is first preheated until it reaches a salinity level of about 20%. The whole process of making salt here takes from from sea to salt from seven to 10 days, depending on the weather and the time of the year. We get uh, better results in the winter time because of the lower humidity, because the frost takes out the humidity. And it's harder in the summertime, as you can see, we have a really high humidity uh, and rain, so it's really hard to evaporate because this Iceland is not a place where you usually make salt. Once it's reached this point, it's moved to large pans and boiled. When the water hits 26% salinity, it becomes completely saturated and salt crystals start to form on the surface. These crystals slowly sink to the bottom of the pans, where they're drawn and drained of any remaining liquid. The salt is spread evenly on drying trays and moved to a large oven to dry for over 12 hours, before being sifted and packaged for sale. Salt has been an important part of Icelandic cuisine for hundreds of years, and many treated it as a currency. Although sourcing salt isn't quite so hard these days, the tradition of salt making still remains. During the 17th century, the Danish king had his salt making factory in this region, and he was also producing salt uh, here. And it was an important part of the economy of the island, uh, as it was used for preserving food over the long winter months, and also for uh, export of fish and cod. In those times also, it was considered as valuable as gold. There was a law introduced here in the 17th century stating that people, while working as salt makers, were prohibited of having a wife or a children or children or a family because it was seen as a distraction from work. It just shows how important it was to them. The final result is a very minimally processed flaky sea salt from clear Icelandic waters. Unlike processed rock salt, the sea minerals remain in the crystals, but these are only a tiny percentage of the final product. Producing any product in such a remote location has its difficulties, which contributes to the price. But with Saltwerk featuring exclusively at some of the world's best restaurants, and their production process leaving a 0% carbon footprint, consumers will continue to pay top dollar for pure Icelandic sea salt. <laughs>